Gonorrhea is actually the second most popular type of STD in the United States. And what I mean by STD is a sexually transmitted disease, which is usually how people get this from having sex with someone who is infected. Now, another name for it would be the clap. Now, some historians believe that this name was created because a person would experience like a clapping feeling when trying to urinate. The other theory is that in order to remove the pus fluid, there would be this device that would clap down on the penis, and that's how they would remove the, uh, the, the fungus pus from the disease. The last idea would be that French brothels were called Les Clapiers, and people that went to those brothels would, would get infected. And that's how the name clap came about. Now, if a man gets infected around his penis, within the first week or two, there's like a 95% chance he's going to know he's infected. And basically, one of the most common symptoms would be pain when trying to urinate. There's, uh, there can also be like a white, green, or yellow pus, like I mentioned in that clapping thing, that comes out of the penis uh, due to the immune system trying to fight off the infection, the bacteria. Another symptom would be, of course, inflamed or swollen testicles. And this, uh, this is going to indicate that the virus, I'm, I'm sorry, the, the bacteria has spread. Now, for women, the symptoms are going to be a little bit hard, harder to detect and might be confused with a yeast infection. Uh, there could be some pain in the whole stomach area around the vagina, as well as an increase in the vaginal fluid. And it could come out the same color, like white, yellowish, or green. Uh, a woman may experience an, an more bleeding in between her periods. And lastly, there could be swelling in the whole area as well. Now, besides the vagina, someone can also get infected with their mouth. This bacteria it needs warm environment to survive. It can't survive outside for not too long, a couple of minutes at the most. Now, the symptoms will, of course, be a sore throat, would one of them be. Another sign would be swollen lip nods. And this will, they're basically located on the upper part of the, of the uh, neck, like around here. With the eyes, it could cause eye pain, uh, sensitivity to light, and, and still this whole fu pus fungus fluid that's yellow or white can come out of the eye as well. And lastly, it can also come about in the anus too. And of course, the symptoms would be like itching, the same pus fungus, as well as some blood. Now, if left untreated, this bacteria can actually grow and get worse. It might damage the urethra, in a man and block the passageway so that, uh, well, he can't pee. With women, it can lead to infections in the vina, vagina area and possibly render a female infertile, worst case scenario. Eventually, it can actually get in the bloodstream and travel around just like cancer does. And if it does that, it's going to bring about inflammation in certain areas, like with the joints. It could bring about inflammation, bring about pain like arthritis. It can lead to the liver, bones, even the heart, cause inflammation. And this whole inflammation process is not good because it ages us, it damages organs, and can lead to some real, some big health problems, even cancer. And the best way to treat this disease is with, was with an antibiotic. Also, someone can use herbal remedies, which are a great idea because it's believed this disease is getting better at resisting the prescription drugs out there. Now, a few common herbs could would include stuff, stuff like garlic, olive leaf extract, colloidal silver. Now, in fact, in the 19th century, silver nitrite was a very popular treatment for eliminating gonorrhea, and later, colloidal silver was used. Now, some health experts believe that no harmful bacteria can actually live close to small amounts of silver. But there's so many herbs out there that, that can help. And you can get these herbs in a dietary supplement. The best news about these supplements is they can be pretty inexpensive for the most part, provide a lot of health benefits, while being pretty easy to take. I mean, with exercise, someone has to actually get out there and work, but with a, with a supplement, you just gotta swallow a pill. Now, the bad news with supplements is that uh, the industry is pretty loosely regulated which means it's easy for companies to make products that actually harm people, which actually does happen on occasion. 
Also, these products can be very confusing since there are so many of them out there and they all say, say pretty much the same stuff. Now, to make your job a little bit easier in your whole hunt and quest to find supplements that improve your health, that help you, I've actually created a guide all about the topic of shopping for supplements. Now, just a few things you'll learn in this guide will be how to identify a good supplement brand over a product that's more risky. Goes over different various herbal remedies to consider, um, as well as what the roles of government agencies are when it comes to uh, regulating and protecting us, which is probably might surprise you. Some interesting stuff in there. Now you might be wondering how much this guide's gonna end up costing you. Well, the great thing is it's actually completely free. Now you can learn more by simply clicking the link directly below this video. Okay, well, I hope uh, I helped a few people out there. Thank you so much for your time and have a great, wonderful rest of your day.